Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm canning up two new meal in a jar recipes and I'm really looking forward to restocking our pantry shelf with these and sharing these recipes with you. So the two recipes I'm canning today are a pork roast in a jar and a chicken curry. And both of these recipes come from the all new ball book. So I'll be sure to link that in the description box down below if you do want to check it out. And I am going to be making a couple adjustments to the recipes just to fit our needs a little bit better. And I'll be sure to be clear on those as we go through the recipes and the full original recipe along with any substitutions or adjustments that I make will be in the description box down below. So let's get started. So first step, I'm just gonna get some broth heating. I'm using some chicken broth and we're not gonna need a whole lot. This is just to top off the jars to an inch of headspace. So I'm gonna heat probably a quart of broth and we might not even use that for all seven quarts that we're pressure canning today. I've got the broth heating behind me. I have all of my ingredients laid out, ready to go. I went ahead and chopped everything ahead of time just so you don't have to watch the prep portion of this. And these are gonna come together super quickly. So I'm going to start out with the chicken curry and then move on to the pork roast in a jar. For the chicken curry, I'm going to be doing three quarts today and then I'm going to do four quarts of the pork roast in a jar. So for the chicken curry, I'm gonna start out with a half cup of diced onion per quart. To those three quarts, I'm also going to add a half cup of diced potato. And then I'm adding two tablespoons of chopped cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, feel free to leave that out. I personally am a big fan. I'm actually going to do a little bit extra cilantro. I know everybody has different comfort levels when it comes to playing around with tested canning recipes. I personally feel completely safe adding a little bit extra cilantro, so that's what I'm doing. Now, the recipe does not include any fresh garlic for the chicken curry. Again, I am adding some fresh garlic. I feel comfortable with that. So I'm doing about a clove per quart. Now the chicken curry recipe also calls for adding a quarter cup of raisins per quart jar. I actually don't have any on hand. Um, I didn't do any raisins from our grapes this year. We had a bunch from last year I needed to use up and they didn't actually last as long as I anticipated. So I am leaving those out today, but definitely add in the quarter cup of raisins if you want. And the recipe also calls for a half cup of diced tomatoes. Now, this is another substitution that I'm making. I'm doing a half cup of a thin tomato sauce. This is a plain tomato sauce. I really could be using a funnel right now to avoid making a mess, but I guess why bother at this point? Um, so I'm doing a half cup of this thin tomato sauce just in place of those diced tomatoes. We're not far along and I'm already making a huge mess. No surprise there. Okay, so next up, I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of tomato paste per jar. Now for seasonings, I'm going to do a teaspoon of salt per quart. You want to use non-iodized salt. And then a half teaspoon each of curry powder and garam masala. I never know if I'm saying that right, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I love curry, so I'm really excited to have these on the pantry shelf. I want to try like a Thai red curry as well, so if that's something you've tried, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. The last ingredient that we need for these is chicken. So the recipe calls for, per quart, a pound of boneless chicken cut into two inch pieces. Now, we raise our own chickens and pigs for meat, and if I'm gonna take the time to um, part a chicken, I don't wanna use that for canning. So what I do instead is I partially cook a whole chicken 
and then just pull it off the carcass and that's what I'm using. So I'm going to divide this evenly between the three quarts. The chicken curry is ready to go. I'm going to fill these with broth all at once. So I'm going to get going on the pork roast in a jar. For the pork roast in a jar, I'm going to do another half cup per quart of chopped onion. And then the recipe also calls for a half cup of diced potato. But just thinking about how we're probably going to use this pork roast, I'm going to leave the potato out. And in place of that half cup potato that the recipe calls for, I'm going to do an additional quarter cup each of chopped celery and chopped carrot. So again, that's a substitution that I feel comfortable with. I know everybody has different comfort levels when it comes to adapting canning recipes, but I'm perfectly comfortable with that. So to each quart, I'm going to add a half cup of celery. Again, the recipe called for a quarter cup. I'm bumping that up to a half cup since I'm omitting those potatoes. And then for the carrots, the recipe calls for a third of a cup. I'm doing a third of a cup plus a quarter of a cup, again, since I'm leaving out those potatoes. For the pork roast in a jar, I figure we'll probably eat this over either mashed potatoes with a side of green beans, or we might have this over rice, but the potatoes just don't feel necessary in it. So the pork roast in a jar recipe is actually the pot roast in a jar recipe in the all new ball book with just a couple substitutions. So we're doing pork in place of the beef and I'm going to be using white wine in place of the red wine. And then the recipe calls for a clove of garlic per quart jar. So I'm adding that in. Now to each jar, I'm going to add another teaspoon of salt, again, non-iodized. If you use iodized salts, you can end up with some discoloration in your product, which is not that nice to look at. And then I'm going to do a half teaspoon of black pepper. I think white pepper would be really good in this, but I don't have any on hand right now. And then a bay leaf per jar. Just remember to pull that out when you go to heat this. Something that I get asked a lot on some of my other meal in a jar recipe videos is if these are fully cooked. So yes, after they go through the pressure canner, they are fully cooked. And then a teaspoon of dried thyme per quart. This recipe is one of my favorite meal in a jar recipes. It is just ultimate comfort food. So I'm excited to get some more onto the pantry shelf with the pork in place of the beef. And then I'm going to be adding a half cup of white wine per quart. If you don't want to cook with white wine, you can just use broth in place of this. But the white wine is going to add a ton of good flavor and the alcohol is going to fully cook off. When it comes to cooking with wine, people have different opinions on whether you should just use a cheap wine or if you should use something nicer. I don't wanna use a super nice bottle just to save a little bit of money, but I do want it to be something that I would drink on its own.
The last step before I add in the broth is adding the pork roast to the quart jars. So this is pork that I've trimmed and cut into about two inch chunks. You're gonna want about a pound per quart jar. So I'm just gonna evenly distribute this. I measured it out when I was chopping it up. And then I'm just gonna top these off with broth to an inch of headspace. Now I'm just gonna get my jars cleaned up really well with some white vinegar. Anytime that I'm canning something that either has some fat, like the broth and the meat does in these, or that has a lot of sugar, I like to use white vinegar just to make sure that I get the rooms nice and clean to make sure that we get a good seal. Now, since I decided to not use a funnel, like I probably should have, I'm going to wipe down <laughs> the entire jars. Now I'm just going to debubble these really well and make sure we're still at that one inch of headspace. And if I need to, I'll adjust the headspace by either removing some broth or adding some more. Now to serve these for the pork roast in a jar, what I'll do is I'll empty out the jar into a pot. I'll save a little bit of the broth liquid and make a slurry with either, you could use cornstarch, I typically do arrowroot powder, and then I'll add that in, and that's just gonna help to thicken that up a little bit. You could use flour, um, but I typically will do arrowroot. And then for the curry, I probably won't thicken that, I'll just heat that up and serve that over rice. I just realized I did that backwards, usually I would, <laughs> clean the rims after I did the debubbling, so I'm just gonna give them one more wipe down just to make sure we're good to go. The last step before I get these in the canner is applying clean lids and the rings to fingertip tight. Today I'm using my favorite four jars canning lids. These are by far my favorite canning lids. I find they perform a lot better than some of the other popular brands and they are a lot cheaper for me, I find, if I buy them in bulk versus if I just go to a local store and pick up a pack of 12. So if you would like to give those a try, I do have a discount code and I'll leave that in the description box down below. To my pressure canner, I'm adding three quarts of water matched to the temperature of the jars. For my Presto 23 quart, that is what's required, but if you're using a different brand or model, you're gonna wanna double check that. I've got the jars ready to go in the canner behind me and I'm slowly bringing up the temperature. Once I see a steady stream of steam coming out of the vent pipe, I'm going to start a timer for 10 minutes. And once that 10 minutes is up, I'll place on the regulator and bring the canner up to pressure. Now, if you're using a weighted gauge pressure canner, you're going to want to process at 10 pounds of pressure. If you are using a dial gauge pressure canner, which is what I'm using, you're going to want to process at 11 pounds of pressure. And of course, if you are above a thousand feet of elevation, you are going to need to adjust the pressure as well. So be sure to check that out. I'll leave some information on that in the description box down below. Since I'm doing quarts today, these are going to process for 90 minutes. If you did want to do these in pints, they would process for 75. So I'm going to wrap up the video here. I'll be sure to update you as these come out of the canner. Really looking forward to having some more of these meal in a jar recipes ready to go on the pantry shelf for some convenience meals. If you enjoyed this video, I do have a couple other meal in a jar recipe videos here on my channel, so be sure to check those out. And as always, any information you might need will be in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.